electric motorcycles like the Super Soco TC Max are gaining popularity as a cleaner and more sustainable alternative to traditional motorcycles. There are heaps of reasons why you choose to buy one and probably just as many that you wouldn't. So we need to start by saying that this bike is not for everyone. You'd have to be looking at either a low capacity petrol powered bike or a scooter for the Super Soco TC Max to be a viable option. Just like you probably wouldn't buy a Honda Goldwing to ride around the back streets of the Sydney CBD, you're not going to buy the TC Max to head off into the hills for a pie run. But that's not to say that it doesn't fit its intended purpose. Before we get going, remember, if you like this video, then give us a thumbs up, leave a comment and hit that subscribe button. Also, head over to our Facebook page and join the Biker Talk community group. And if you're after any new motorcycle gear, then check out our online store. We've just listed a whole range of new apparel from premium brands like Beltstaff, Pando Moto and Rocker. And we still have a few Biker Talk branded t-shirts available, so jump online and check them out. The Super Soco TC Max is based on a brand new high power central motor that very conveniently has a belt drive. Rear wheel peak torque is 180 newton meters, and I've got to be honest, I'm not really sure how they've measured that. It has inverted forks with a 17 inch wheel on the front and a combined brake system. There are 240 millimeter discs on the front and rear, and there's a three piston floating caliper on the front and a single piston floating caliper on the rear. It has three rider modes, which Super Soco says are designed to meet the multiple needs of riders. The three rider modes are Eco, which in theory gives you 140 kilometers of range with a top speed of 60 kilometers an hour. That is if you're a 75 kilo rider. Be very careful. Normal, which has 80 kilometers of range and a top speed of about 80 kilometers an hour. And Sport, where you only get 60 kilometers of range and a top speed of 100 kilometers per hour. It's 1,963 millimetres long and has a seat height of 770 millimetres. As for weight, well, it's about the same as you, right? 100 kilos? That's your second warning. It has a dynamic LED headlight that adapts to road conditions with a wide angle throw of light. I have to say the throw of light is okay, although I must admit I did have it on high beam for most of my night riding, mostly so I could be seen as this bike is stealthily quiet, so the high beam was on for added safety. Charging of the 72 volt battery takes about four to five hours. Now I couldn't find any info on whether or not both versions are tubeless. You'd assume they would be because having tube tires on a bike that represents where technology is heading just seems odd. The Super Soco TC Max comes in cosmic gray electric yellow, neon orange, and phantom black. As we said, you'd really need to be in the market for an urban commuter if you're looking at a bike like the TC Max. It's not for everyone, but at the same time, it does hit its design brief. I think the main thing that we both really liked about it is just how easy it is to lane filter. Yeah. It's just so light and so narrow. Yeah, exactly. But also because there's no clutch to worry about, you're not concerned by gear changes. Yeah. Uh, it's simply twist and go. I don't think I've ever ridden a bike that's as good in slow city traffic where lots of filtering is required. Mm. Uh, it's very light and nimble. Being an electric, it's also environmentally friendly and extremely economical to run. With fuel prices like they are, that's obviously a big plus for me. Yeah, and maintenance is no big issue as it's really easy to maintain. There's no oil changes and no need to lube the chain as it's a belt drive, smart move. So maintenance is really just down to checking tyre pressures before you ride and brake fluid when it's due. Speaking of the brakes, they did do their job. In fact, I'd have to say the combined braking system is pretty good. It's got a really cool look and I loved the colour that we had, which was the electric yellow. It's very modern. In fact, Super Soco are marketing it as a Neo Cafe racer. I'm not totally sure what that means, but I do like the look. I don't know what that means either, but I agree. It looks pretty good. The colours are interesting and the build quality is so much better than the CPX scooter that we had about 18 months ago. It looks like Super Soco have really upped their game there. Okay, so here is the real defining factor as to whether or not you'd buy one, and that is the battery in terms of charging, removal, and range. So just the battery in general, really. So let's start with charging. It looks really straightforward. Just plug in the transformer and charge it, unless you don't have access to power in the garage, which I don't either in my apartment or at the studio at work. 
So for Tegan, it means removing the seat, turning off the isolator switch, unlocking the battery compartment, holding open the battery lid, which always wants to close, and turning the key to unlock the battery. Then unplugging the battery while still turning the key and using those guns of yours, Tegan, to lift out the 20 kilo plus battery. Now, as Tegan mentioned, we don't have access to power in the garage at the studio, but I have power in the garage at home. So I'd simply plug it in, which it should be fine, except that because of the distance that I have to commute, I can't get to the office and back on one charge. So I have to take the bulky transformer with me to the office. Now, if I own one of these bikes, I'd simply buy another transformer, one for home and one for work. So apart from that, the other things are relatively minor. The first time I started it up, I thought the sound was kind of cool. <laughs> And then the second time I started it up, I was completely over it. There's no foot brake, which as a motorcyclist, it just feels a bit weird. A scooter ride would be okay with it, but I kept going for the brake with my right foot in traffic. I think it would be more appealing if it did have a foot brake instead of the left side handbrake for the rear. Now, one issue a lack of foot brake throws up is that when you're on a hill, you can't take your hands off the bars because you need to apply at least one of the brakes. Otherwise, as I found out, you just roll backwards. The suspension is okay, but the bike is incredibly small and the tires are very thin, which makes riding on certain road surfaces interesting. But overall, the main issue we found was the battery life. For me, where I live, it's just not a viable option. But if I live closer to the city like Tegan, it'd be a reasonable option and a very cheap commuter. Yeah, but only if you have PowerPoint in the garage. Okay, I'll get onto that. Anything else? We need a coffee machine too. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is a really tricky one. For its design purpose, as an urban commuter, it works. And I must admit, the more time I spent on it, the more I got used to it. Zipping through Sydney traffic was a breeze. The power delivery is interesting because at first twist of the throttle, it takes a little bit of time to get going, but the power just keeps building and building until you hit top speed for the mode you're in, which is quite fun. But for me, where I live, the bike just doesn't work, so I'd have to give it a five. Yeah, I love the fact that it is so economical to run and commuting was a breeze, but just because of the charging situation, I was just dreading having to take the battery out each time to charge. Paired with the silent engine and the really slow initial acceleration, unfortunately it's a four for me, but that's mainly based on the battery. Ah, uh, no. Look, it is a reasonable option as an urban commuter. Power builds slowly, which was a surprise. You'd expect there to be instant torque. But the power keeps building and doesn't drop off until you hit the top speed of whatever mode you're in. So you just have to be actually a little careful because the way that the power builds, you can look down and realize that you're actually doing over the speed limit. For me, because of the battery range, I tended to switch between modes quite a bit. Leaving the office, for example, where the speed limit ranges between 40 and 60 kilometers an hour, I would leave it in eco mode, which worked just fine. As soon as I hit roads that were consistently between 60 and 70 kilometers an hour, I'd flick it into normal mode. Then, as soon as I was on the freeway, it'd be in sport mode, and it will easily sit at 100 kilometers an hour, with the exception of when you're on an incline of more than 17 degrees. Now, just to be clear, Ross is not some Rain Man type maths genius. Definitely not. The manual states that the maximum angle to maintain power is 17 degrees. So I did attempt to ride to Bundina in the Royal National Park, but by the time I'd arrived at the spot where I was meeting my mate Ben, well, the battery was already down to 75%. Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna make it to Bundina. So it was a very short ride through the first part of the park before turning around and heading to a local farmer's market for a coffee. Now, the one thing that we haven't touched on is the environmental impact of producing electric vehicles. While the production of EVs, like the Super Psycho TC Max, do have some environmental impact, Research has generally shown that EVs still have a lower total environmental impact over their lifetime compared to petrol or diesel powered vehicles. And cue the flood of comments regarding electric vehicles, but bring it on. But would I buy a Super Soco TC Max? For me, in my situation, probably not. Honestly, with no power available in the garage, the battery removal situation was just a pain. And for me, with a better battery life, well, maybe but certainly not to replace any of my petrol powered bikes. As an affordable, cheap commuter, it works. 
I would just want more battery range, certainly enough to get me from home to the office and back. So what are your thoughts on electric vehicles like the Super Soco TC Max? Would you buy one for where you live? If you like this video, then please leave a like and give us a thumbs up. Also, check out our online store. We're gonna have some new short and long sleeve t-shirts coming up very soon. That's it for today. Till next time, stay safe and enjoy your next pie run.